Hey y'all, it's Matt with Wacky Works. Today we're gonna to be doing the unboxing of the Baco Engineering vacuum pot. This is the five gallon vacuum pot. Um, I'm also gonna do the unboxing of the Harbor Freight 3CFM two stage vacuum pump. Um, I should have went ahead and got the vacuum pump from Baco Engineering. Um, they have a 4.5 cfm vacuum pump it's a really great deal where they have the whole thing for around 200 bucks for the whole entire setup uh and you can't beat that i'll have a link for it down below so what i'm doing right now is inspecting the container and the wrapping making sure there's nothing that's broken on it i'm making sure that it has all of its contents which is a glass lid a five gallon pot with the valve uh, the vacuum pump that will come with the actual full setup and the vacuum hose that i ordered with it with this kit the valve and the whole assembly comes already on it you just got to tighten up the the nut that's on the back side of it the gaskets are already in place but i'm just tightening it up a little bit making sure that everything is not going to leak and that's what you the biggest thing that you're looking for is for it not to leak now i'm installing the filter that comes with it so that way when you release the air it does not suck dirty air back into it hook the hose up to it put the glass plate on it and then i'm ready to go ahead and hook up the pump now we'll go ahead and do the Pittsburgh pump, which is from Harbor Freight. Um, it is a three CFM pump. So we're gonna go ahead and unpackage it, make sure there's no damages to it. Again, just kind of doing the same thing, making sure everything's there that's supposed to be there. So inside this, you're gonna have the pump itself, and then it's also gonna have the oil. That oil that goes into it is a very thin oil. It's only made for these kinds of pumps. Pittsburgh has set you up with this where it already comes pre-measured, ready to go inside the pump. After that, remove the red oil cap so that you can fill the oil in the pump until it gets to the point where it says in between the min and max, there's a min and max line there for you. Once you got it filled up, clean up any extra oil that you have on the edges and put the cap back on. Let's go ahead and get it plugged in. And then we're gonna hook the hose up to the actual pod. And I'm just gonna run a test on it just to make sure that everything is working properly, making sure that we ain't got no problems with anything. We'll close the valve on the filter side, this allowing the air to be sucked from the pump into the pressure pot. So therefore we're pulling all the air out of that pressure pot. And as you can see, it's starting to drop now. And I'm just running this real time for you so that you can kind of see how fast it's going to pull down that air. Now there's nothing in it, so there's no bubbles coming out of something, but it's going to be sealed right to that top really, really securely. When you want to let the air out, close off the side that goes to your pump and release the filter side. This way you're allowing filtered air to be pumped back into it and you're not pulling anything from the pump. I picked this two gallon bucket up. Um, it allows me to put the material inside of it if it overflows, I still have a long way to go before I'm pumping fluid back into my pump. As you can see, the nozzle's on the side of there and I don't want it to go into the motor. I went ahead and got this wood, I already had it dried completely out inside my oven and then brought it out, let it cool completely off before I start using the cactus juice. Now this cactus juice comes from Turntex. Uh, it's got a catalyst in it or an activator, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and mix that up into it, which then makes it start to be usable. Once we go ahead, we'll have about a one year shelf life for it. It never lasts that long in my shop, but it, that's about how long we have to use it and get it mixed up completely. But we mix that back up into it, um, get a good mix of it so it's good and blended in, make sure there's no chunks. And then we're gonna add that to it and then we're gonna draw that material into our wood. Uh, it, acts, it, it is a resin and it's heat activated. So once we get it drawn into the wood, we got no bubbles coming back out. We know we have a good um, consistency of it in there. Then we're gonna put it inside the oven at about 200 degrees, and we're gonna keep it in there for about two to four hours, depending on how big a, a, a piece of wood that you have. Make sure that we got it completely heated up all the way through, and then we'll pull it out and it'll be stabilized. But we'll move forward from here. Now that we got the cactus juice completely mixed back up, we're going to go ahead and add it to our material. And what I want to do is completely submerge this material. I don't want it to be out of the resin at all while we're vacuuming it. It, it, it makes no sense. We just need to continue to keep it soaking. Okay. 
Once I get it completely full, I go ahead and add a block to the top of it. Yeah, I didn't do it on camera, but you can see it there. And I'm pushing it down to submerge everything. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply the lid to it. I'm gonna turn the vacuum on and we're gonna draw the air out of it. Make sure that you cut off the valve on the filter side because if you don't, it takes a long time to let you know that you didn't do that. As you can see, we're vacuuming it down. You can see the bubbles coming out of the wood and it's, it's gonna take it out of the piece that I have that sitting on above it, but that's okay because it'll get stabilized later on. But I'm just using it as a weight to hold down that material so that's completely submerged and we're pulling the air out of the wood. These were not really bad pieces to stabilize. They were pretty stabilized, but because I'm gonna cast them in resin, I wanna go ahead and get them stabilized so that the wood and the resin next to it has the same consistency. When you start doing this, it's gonna have about 25, negative 25 mercury is what it is, that it's gonna be pulling off from this. But when the bubbles start to slow down a little bit, I don't like to run my pot the entire time. So what I'll do is I'll get it down till it's in the 29 to 30 range. And I'll go ahead and close off both sides. So that way it'll hold that overnight. And so you can see right now, the bubbles are really, really slow on it right now. They're not going very fast and it sucked a lot of material out of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'll pull the camera around and show you where we're at. We're at negative 29 right now. So what I'm gonna do is close off the valves and I'll let that sit overnight. So it sat overnight in a negative 29 pressure, but it's actually dropped some. It's all the way back up to 20. So I'm gonna turn the vacuum pot back on and I'm gonna pull out some more material and you'll see it's gonna build up a little bit and it'll have very few bubbles, but it does have some. So I just wanna get as many bubbles out of it as I can so I have a, a very firm product at the end. So you can see I'm holding a negative 29. I'm gonna go ahead and close my pump side, open up the, the, um, the filter side to let air back in, slowly let it in at first, then I just kinda of let it rush in at the end. But I'm pulling all that air back into it so I can take the lid back off from it and we can get it into the oven.
So now that I got the pieces pulled out, I'm just taking a look at them just to see what they look like. I want to make sure there's nothing in there that's like dry or anything like that. And you can kind of see they're, they're pretty consistent. Now I know not everybody's got a big oven. Um, this isn't a huge oven, but it is about a thousand dollar oven. And I got it used, uh, fixed some pieces on it, and it's now in my shop. Um, I've seen people use other type of ovens and the heating element is exposed at the bottom and this stuff drips. And so you see I have a pan down in the bottom of it that catches any kind of the drips that come down because I don't want them to hit that heating element. Not saying that it'll catch on fire, but I know it does put off a lot, of, a lot of smoke that comes off from it and I just don't want that in my shop. So I left it in the oven overnight. They're very hot, but they're cooling. Um, I had turned off the, the heater on it, heating element, and pulling them out, putting them into a container right now so that I can seal them up, let them cool the rest of the way, and then I'll take them over to the bandsaw, cut them in their final dimensions, and then sand up all the sides that I did not saw on. Um, the reason that I am doing that is cactus juice resin and the aluminite clear slow resin that I'll be using to cast in this, they don't really bond very well uh, without being roughed up first. And so you've got to get them sanded first. So you'll see here, I'm going to take them to the sandpaper and I'm just going to sand the edges down so that way they're, they're nice and clean. Uh, and then I'll cut everything into its final dimension. So now that we've got them sanded, we're going to take them over here to our bandsaw. Um, I got about a two inch width here and I'm going to run through the bandsaw and just cut them down to final dimensions so they can go inside their molds. Um, when I cast them in the mold, they'll, hey, they'll have a two inch by uh, two inch mold that I cast them into. Uh, and we'll cast them around resin. Here we are casting right now. So we are casting the resin. We have our resin heated up to about 105 degrees and we're doing four colors in each mold, casting them in there. Um, and this way it gets a good bond to the stabilized material. Um, and then we'll swirl the colors and then they're gonna go into a pressure pot for about two hours. And then we'll pull them out of the pressure pot, let them cure for the rest of the day. And then I'll turn around and cut those into blanks. And I'll show you those blanks here at the end. The molds I use are from Jake Blanks. I'll leave a, uh, a link for that down below. Um, and then I do enough in here so I can get some pen blanks out of it. I get about 12 pen blanks and two knife scales out of each uh, mold. Um, I can't fit into my five, pound, five gallon pressure pot one more than one in a level. So I built a little small jig so I can put a second lift on there. And we get them casted in there for about two hours. And then we, of course, we have our oversized stuff, our overflow um, little molds that we put in there as well. Get it locked down. We pressurize it to about 55, 50 to 60 pounds PSI. And we pull them out and here's what they look like. These molds have an overflow a uh, little mark on the sides of them and handles that are going on the sides, they, they just work out perfect. Um, Jake's really done a good job at getting that all taken care of. So here's what they are. Um, we're gonna pull them out of the mold and you can see that is bonded really well to that resin uh, and to the stabilized wood. And we'll go ahead and pull everything out. And then we're, we're gonna saw cut it up and I'll give you the final results here at the end. If y'all have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Uh, if you have anything, any, any questions or comments or ways that you do it differently, just hit me up and let, let me know what's, what you think about it. Um, I really appreciate, appreciate you guys stopping by and, and seeing all this stuff and seeing what we're doing going on in our shop. And I hope that you're liking what you see. Um, please leave me a thumbs up if you liked it. If you don't, leave me a thumbs down and, and let me know why. So here we are cutting them into final dimensions and then we'll sand them all up, make them, make them all nice and smooth. And then we'll get them buffed up and get them on Etsy for sale. These are our knife scales here. I think they turn out really well. Um, 
they just to look amazing at the end of the day. And I like the fact that we're doing hybrid blanks. So they look really well. Uh, again, leave me something down below. Let me know what you think. And here's the final result of everything right here.